right. Uh, so, in the last lecture, we had discussed the, the planning problem and seen how it is related to general searching, how we can represent plans and how we can represent solutions to the plans in terms of this thing. So, we will briefly recap what we had seen, just the outline of that and then we will start uh, studying different kinds of planning strategy. So, out of which we will mainly study three different strategies. The first is partial order planning. Partial order planning is uh, an algorithm which was developed some time back and then we will study some more recent algorithms, namely an algorithm called graph plan and an algorithm called sat plan. Hmm? So, these have evolved in the 90s and uh, have rejuvenated the, the notion of how planning problems are solved. In this uh, topic, let us quickly recap what we had seen before. So, a planning problem is uh, something like this where we want to reach a certain goal and typically in a planning problem, the goal that we want to reach can be split up into possibly independent sub goals. Like for example, here we have get tea biscuits and a book and uh, these could be independent but it could also be the case that certain kinds of actions uh, can generate both of them in which case there will be an implicit dependency between them. So, the representation is in the form of an initial state and a goal state and we can represent these states in uh, variants of first order logic, represent the goals in a similar way and as we had seen that there are certain constraints that we have on uh, these states etcetera. Like for example, in, uh, in the language strips, the states are represented by conjunctions of function free ground literals. So, functions are not allowed whereas, later languages like ADL will support that. Then we had seen that uh, we can represent goals also as a conjunction of literals, more recent languages also support disjunctions of literals and goals can also contain variables. Then we had seen that the other input to the planning problem is a given set of actions. Each action has a precondition and a effect. The precondition must be satisfied for the action to be applicable and if you apply the action, then a certain other facts can get added to the knowledge base or deducted from the knowledge base. So, that is the effect of the action, right. And then we had seen that a plan is represented as a set of plan steps and there, are, there is some causal ordering and also some general ordering between the steps of the planning. So, these are this and in addition there is there are some bindings because the actions themselves can have variables. So, for example, we can have at x and then the variable x has to be bound to something which you already have achieved. So, for, suppose you have achieved at t stall, then you can use t stall to bind at x which could be the precondition for cells x uh, something, right. And then we have a set of causal links which are introduced when uh, the, the, if the final state s dash has a precondition c and the action actually satisfies that precondition, right. So, these are the causal links, right. So, what we will do is we will study the partial order planning um, algorithm through one example, namely the example of where we have to fetch the tea, uh, the biscuits and the book. So, the initial state, so all this modeling that I am showing here is in strips. So, the initial state is the start action, right. Recall that in the start action, we do not have any precondition, but we can have a set of effects. So, uh, in this initial state, the action name is start and we have the following effect that we have at home, we are given that uh, B A stands for book stall. We are given that book stall sells books and T stall sells T. 
and T stall also sells biscuits. So, this is what is given to us and we represent that as the effects of the start action. Right? So, all that is initially given to you are part of the start action, they are part of the effects of the start action right? and in addition to this we have certain other actions which are given to us. The goal state is one where in a goal state we will not have any effect, we will only have the precondition right? and what is the precondition that we, ha we will have? The precondition that we will have is we are at home, we have tea, have biscuits and have book. Right? So, this is represented by the finish action. So, for those who have just joined us, uh, what we are doing is we are studying the partial order planning problem. So, the partial order planning is a algorithm which has been developed quite some time back and we are modeling the problem of fetching tea, biscuits and book as the example over which we will demonstrate the uh, partial order planning algorithm. So, we have just about started by describing the start action and the finish action. The start action has the initial set of propositions as the effect and the finish action has whatever goal that we want to reach that is the precondition of the finish action. Right? Now, in addition to these two steps in the plan, so any partial order planning uh, algorithm will start with an initial plan which consists of the start action and the finish action and we will also be given a set of actions that we can apply and these actions for this problem are as follows. We have the action go there, right. Now, this there is a variable. So, whenever we have apply this action on a state, this there will have to be bound to something, some place which is there in the knowledge base at that point of time. Okay. The precondition is at here and the effect is that we are no longer at here and we are at there. Right. See this there and here are variables. So, I could have written x and y also. Huh. Right. The second action that is given to us is buy x. So, how do we buy x? We can buy x if we are at a store and sell store x. Now, again store is just a name that I have used to make it uh, friendly. I mean you could use at y and sells y x, right. I mean this is not a specific store that I am talking about, it is just a variable at y and sells y x, right. This is a precondition and the effect is that have x. So, the buy action requires that you are at the place which sells x and the effect of the action is that you have x, right. If you wrote an action called steal x, right, then you could also write action steal x, then at store, sell store x and have x. You could make the problem more complex by adding things like whether you have money or not, right. So, th there is where the difference between buy x and steal x will come. So, if you have uh, have money as the precondition, then, then the action is buy x and in the precondition for the steal x, you need not have the have money predicate, right. Okay. Right. So, before we go into the algorithm, let me quickly uh, take an example, take the, the example that we have at hand and see how partial order planning will work. Hmm? So, what we are going to do is we will start with the start action and the finish action. Hmm? So, at the start action, Text please, text. So, at the start action, so we will write start, this is the action. So, the graph that I am drawing is some is, is the plan that we write in strips in the form of the, the plan. Recall, recall that we had given a structure of a plan in strips. Uh, let me quickly go back. 
Oops, I think I have it in the other previous lecture. Anyway, it is just a just this initial set of actions and the initial set of steps, the set of uh, links and the set of ordering. Hmm. So, we have initially the start action and we have the finish action here. These are the two steps which will always be there in the plan and uh, the effect of the start action is following. We are we have at home and and so this is what is given as the effect of the start action and what we need to achieve is the precondition of the finish which says the things that we have to have is have book have t have biscuits and last but not the least we have to be back at home so not to get lost after buying all these things right now, let us see that how does the partial order planning algorithm go. So, it, so, this is the initial plan, this is the initial plan and initial and the initial plan will also contain one ordering which we will indicate by a dotted line between the start and the finish. So, the initial ordering link will be between the start and the finish, right. This is the initial plan. Now, what we will do in every step is we will examine that which of the preconditions of the steps that has not been achieved. So, this one does not have any preconditions, this one does have preconditions and namely these are the preconditions and none of these have been achieved. Only at home has been achieved, but uh, we are still we still do not know whether it is directly from here. Right? So, have book, have tea, have biscuits they have not been achieved and we will say that at home is achieved only when there is a causal link from somebody who is producing at home to this, to this step, right. As long as we do not have the causal link, we do not know who is going to give us this at home. So, we will consider that it is not yet achieved, okay. Now, we start with have book and then we examine the set of actions that are given to us and see which of these actions can produce have book and which of the actions can produce have book, by book can produce have book because if we look at the set of actions, yes, out of these two actions have is there in the effect of by. So, we try by. But then here we have to bind x, we have to bind x to what? To book. So, it is not just uh, applying the action, but also binding x to book, right. So, we put that action here. So, let us put that step by book. By book. Basically, what is happening here is that we have substitute x by book that gives us this plan, this step, right. And then we can say that this by have book is an effect 
of buy book. So, we have a causal link here, right. And what is the precondition of buy book? The precondition of buy book is at x and sells x book. Okay. Actually, let me call this z because not to confuse with this x. This x was the other argument. This x was the other argument. It was this argument which got replaced by this. So, we need a z to bind to this and we need two steps which is going to give us that at z and sell z book, right. Now, we see that the start action has sells bookstore book, right. So, we can replace this z by bookstore. So, what we will have is we can have this causal link. right, but z replaced by bookstore, but the because this is bound like this. So, this z will also become bookstore. So, we will require this is going to get replaced by at bookstore, right. Now, the moment we put this causal link, we are saying that okay, this cells is being given by this. Okay, this precondition is being satisfied by this. So, this is a causal link. Then we can say that this has been achieved. So, now it has been achieved and this one is yet to be achieved because we do not have this yet, right. Then we see that who can give us at of something. So, go can give us, go has as, it, as its effect at of something, right. So, we look at the go action and we put go of bookstore here. Right? And this go of bookstore can achieve this at of bookstore, right. But remember that it also produces as a side effect not of at of wherever it was originally. So, not of act at of say, uh, say let us call it x, right. And the precondition of this is that at x, right. Now, let us see who can give us at x, we another go could have given us at x and also this can give us at x, right. So, let us say that we put this causal link to achieve this. And so, for this the x gets replaced by home, which means that the side effect of this one is not of at home, right. Now, see in this whole sequence, I have specifically chosen the ones which are going to work. In general, the planner can also choose other actions like for example, when you have this go of bookstore, it can it can try putting another go before this, right. And then we said that we go to the bookstore from home by applying this link. It can come from some other place also. It is not necessarily that it has to go to the bookstore from home. Okay. So, there is an element of search that is there built into this, which I am not explicitly demonstrating here, but you should realize that it is going to try out these different things and we try to achieve that all the unsatisfied preconditions. Hmm. Okay. For example, now we have have tea, have biscuits and at home these three are not yet achieved. So, again we look in a similar way and now I will come into some more detailed problems. So, we are going to look at have t. Let us see 
what happens in half t. So, we need by t just like we reason that half book can only be produced by the by action. So, similarly half t can only be produced by the by action. So, we are not searching everything, we are narrowing down our search by checking what we have to find. So, let us put by of t and by t will achieve this. But then we need, I am not putting the bindings once again like we did here. So, I am just uh, creating a shortcut here and st straight away writing that I have at of t star and cells t star t. And this cell still t stall uh, t is obtained from here, hmm? and at t s will still have to be obtained, right? Now let's see. Now we will have an interesting scenario. So again, we to to have at t stall, we have to go to t stall. So we have g go t stall because the at is only produced either it is already there or it is being produced by the go. There is no other way to get an at and at t stall was not there anywhere. So, to produce that we have to go use go t stall that is clear and that is going to give us this, but now we also have at this at the precondition of this we have an at x <coughs> right. <coughs> now, can we put a link from at home to at x? Hmm? See, see there is a problem here we cannot put this here because if you apply one of these, if you apply this action, then not at home will come into effect, right. And when you are not at home, then you cannot use at home again. So, you cannot put, because you have this link already here, you cannot put this link here. In other words, this action threatens the precondition of the other action. And this action threatens the precondition of this and this threatens the precondition of this, because this has as the precondition at home and this fellow if you bind it to home, then it is going to produce not at home and not at home is, is the precondition that conflicts with this one. Are you getting what I am saying? So, therefore, we have to have some formalism to identify that this kind of threatening is taking place and we have to serialize them, we have to serialize them. So, we have to say, so if you have this problem, then either we have to do this action before at home which is not possible, because at home is being generated by the start and we can have never, we cannot have anything before start. So, we have to do this after go bs. Right. So, we can bind this x with this book stall. Yes. yes. Just because it is uh, conflicting with that, mm -hmm. how could we conclude that we have to put it before go b s and not somewhere else? How do we conclude that? Okay. So, let me create a more generic scenario. Right. So, I have some action, I have some action A which has a precondition of C, right, hmm? which is being generated by some action, okay, let us call this A1, let us call this A2, right. And then I have this step that I have inserted, this another planning step, 
which is A3 which produces not C as its effect. Right? Now, if you do A3 between A1 and A2, then we have a problem. Right? So, the conclusion is that either we have to do A3 before A1 or we have to do A3 after A2. Right? So, if you have a cause effect relationship by virtue of a precondition, then any conflicting actions which produces the negation of the precondition cannot be done in between these two. If this was not producing not C, it was if, if, if it was producing something else, then there is no problem, right. So, if you have this kind of scenario, then we will put those additional ordering constraints. So, we will either put an ordering constraint like this, which says that A3 has to be done before A1 or we will not put this and instead put an ordering constraint like this, which says that A2, A3 has to be done after A2, right, clear. So, it is by that reasoning that coming back to this example, it is by that reasoning that we decide that we will have to do this after this Gopius, otherwise we will have a problem. But then it is still not enough because this go is going to produce as a side effect not of at x. So, suppose I bind this to B s, then it will produce not of at B s. Now, if you do it between these two, then again we will have a problem because to buy the book we have to be at B s. So, this is the the case that I was showing that this produces at B s which is being used by this which is a precondition of this and this action produces not of at B s, right. So, we have to postpone it further and therefore, we have to postpone it right up to here. So, we will put an ordering link like this which goes from by book to go T s and we will substitute x by B s. So, now what do we have? Now, see what is the plan that is forming up out of this? If you, if you just follow the causal links and you do a topological ordering based on the causal links, then you will see that what we are having here is that we first go to the book stall, then we buy the book, then we go to T stall, then we buy the T, right. Now, we have still not uh, done anything about buying the biscuits right and the space is already cluttered. So, let me try to fit in what we do about buying biscuits. So, we will put the action buy biscuits here, right. This buy biscuits is going to give me the half biscuits. Now, what does buy biscuits require? It requires at T stall and sells T stall biscuits, right. So, we will have at T stall and sells T stall and then biscuits, right. This at T stall is achieved by this. So, we can have the link from this to this, right. Sales T stall biscuits is already given here. So, we can have that, right. So, after this we have achieved everything except at home, right, ok. Let me redraw some part of this, so that we can proceed to that, because again we will have some problems yeah, when we try to insert the at. So, we have to go home, but go home from where? If we go home from book stall, then we will not, uh, we will not have bought the tea and biscuits, right. So, again 
those uh, orderings will come into play. So, let me just clean up this part a little bit and then we will go into that. So, what we have here is the plan which we have so far is we have start, then we have go book stall, then we have buy book, and we have finish here right then we have go t stall where we buy t we buy biscuits right and uh, we needed at home here which is being given by this causal link this produces at B s and we needed cells B s book which is given from here right. Then we wanted uh, Okay. At yes, sales TS T sales TS so this is from here and the remaining two are from start right. So, that achieves all these and uh, we needed have book here which comes from here we needed have t which comes from here we needed have biscuits we have from here and we need at home which is not yet achieved. And we also saw that in addition to these links we have the ordering link which goes from here to here because the go action threatens the add b s right. So, that is why we had to uh, put this before this or after this right. right. Now, having then done this let us now see how we achieve at home. So, uh, if we want to achieve at home from here right then the problem will be that this is going to produce not at home. So, there is a conflict between this causal link and this. So, and since we cannot put it before the start, so therefore we have to uh, somehow go home. So, we ap apply the new step which is go home. And that go home will achieve this. Now, when we go home, so we must be at at some place. So, we have to decide that this at of x that we have here, who will give us this, right. Okay. 
So, again we cannot can we have at home no because this is it is going to conflict with this one which produces not at home right. It cannot be at book stall because of again this conflict that this requires at book stall right and if we use this first then we will not be at book stall here. See this here when we bound this thing then we had actually put at book stall. The at x of here was replaced by book, book stall. So, therefore, we cannot have that also. Then we try at t stall, but then again at t stall is threatening this link, right. So, we can have at t stall, but because of this link, this, this link which threatens this, we have to have a causal link from this uh, uh, so ordering link sorry from this to this and also an ordering link from this to this. And these two are because both of these require at t stall. Hmm. So, it threatens this link it also threatens the link to the at t stall of this right. So, this is where partial order planning will stop. Right. This is the thing that it will produce. This does not give us a total ordering among the actions. For example, the sequence in which you buy tea and biscuits, this sequence is not given by this plan. So, you have the freedom to either use this action first and then this action or this action followed by this. The, the relative ordering between these two actions is not uh, given. So, you are free to use any one of them. Hmm? That is why we call it the partial order planning because it produces, it gives you the set of actions that you need to take and you, it gives you a partial order describing the sequence in which the actions have to be taken. Yes, yes, yes. In suppose before getting this go book stall, suppose we had done this, we had done up to this part, let us say, right. <coughs> then to achieve this at t stall, you could have used the the, the go t stall first and then gone, gone from home to this also, right. But what you are probably trying to say is that the partial order does not capture that you could have gone to, you could have done it the other way also, is not it? Yes, See, the, 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 it could have, we could have put that flexibility also, but then what we would have to do is, when you do this ordering, then you have to maintain both the edges. So, either we do this like this or we do it like this and keep both the edges and then you have to say that it is mutex between these two edges, both edges should not be there, only one of them has to be there, right. That would have, that would have captured the whole gamut of the solution space, but that again is a combinatorial problem because you will end up having a plan where, a, where there are a set of mutex pairs of edges. So, this could have been done before this, this could have been done before this, right. And then Resolving all of those will again have another complexity. So, what we attempt to do is we fix one of the, we try one of the orderings first. So, we say that okay, let us try deferring this. So, we put go t s after by book and not the other way around. If, if by doing this we are unable to produce the plan, then we will backtrack and change it. That is where we are taking uh, care of the combinatorial problem which is underlying this. Now we try one after the other. As a result, the final plan that we have, it has some partial order between independent actions, but the ones where one is threatening the other, we just forcibly serialize them in one order. 
Is that uh, all right? Yes. Okay. After you have this plan, then see this the partial order planning algorithm will guarantee that this graph that you have does not have any cycles. Hmm. Okay. That that is the algorithm will check for that and will only add a link provided it does not have produce a cycle. And so therefore, if you do a topological ordering on this that will that will give you one sequence of execution of the actions that will achieve the desired goal. If you and topological ordering is not unique. So, each topological ordering of these actions is going to give you a different plan a different sequence of actions that achieves the goal. Sir, is this ordering go term by term? For example, if the self v s book mm -hmm. comes in between your t s t and t s let's say mm -hmm. and will it go first to t s then to v s then to t s? Well, you might end up finding a plan like that. You might end up finding a, a plan where you first go to the t stall by t then go to the book stall buy book, then go to the tea stall buy biscuits and then go home. Right. So, as of now we are not uh, even considering the problem of finding the optimal plan. We are just satisfied by finding any plan. Right. But yes, these optimizations have been studied and in the later algorithms that I will talk about they will talk about finding the shortest length plan, the minimum number of actions etcetera, right. And more recently people have also talked about uh, planning with temporal goals and planning with costs associated with the, the actions, so that you find out a plan which minimizes the total cost, hmm. okay, right. So, we will quickly look at the pseudocode of the partial order planning algorithm. The pseudocode is directly what we have described just now. So, this is the partial order planning algorithm. It returns a plan. A plan is what? It is the graph like this, which has a set of steps, a partial order between the steps, which is given in terms of the causal uh, links and the, uh, the causal links and the uh, orderings right and the set of planning steps right that is the final solution that is given. So, the first step is calling this make minimal plan with the initial and the goal. So, that is the start state and the goal state. Right? So, this is the start start plan that we do. Then we check if the plan that we have here is a solution. When is it a solution? When all the preconditions of all the actions have been achieved, all the preconditions of all the steps in the plan have been achieved. Hmm? Then return plan. Otherwise, we select a sub goal, which means it is a precondition of some step which has not yet been achieved, that is a sub goal. And then we choose an operator which achieves that sub goal. Now, operator can be of two types. It could be some existing step in the plan. Like for example, when we looked at buy biscuits, we found that already this had already achieved the at T s, right. So, that was already achieved as part of another step. So, we did not have to add any more steps like go to T stall again, right. And uh, the operator could also be a new action that comes in as an additional step into the plan. And then after we choose the operator, the final step is to resolve threads, which will lead to addition of certain ordering links, right. Now, let us look at what do we, what is the select sub goal? Pick a plan step S from steps plan with a precondition C that has not been achieved, right, and return C. So, that is simple. Then choose operator is choose a step S dash from operators 
or steps of plan. Steps of plan is the existing steps that are that is already there in the plan that has C as an effect. If there is no such step then we fail, then we fail and we backtrack to some previous choice point. Choice points could be points where we decided previous orderings, it could be points where we chose previous actions. Then add the causal links, otherwise we add the causal links S dash to S to the links plan. So, plan has one attribute called links, so we just add it to that, that is a set of links. And because every causal ordering, causal link is also an ordering constraint, so we also add S dash precedes S. If S dash is a newly added step from operators, which means it was not a previous step, then we add S dash to steps of plan and add this ordering that S dash should be between start and finish. See this is very important because later on when you resolve threads, you will know that S dash cannot be done before start and it cannot be done after finish. Right? So, in order to preclude those kinds of scenarios, we are a priori adding some orderings to put S dash between start and finish, right. Now, here is what we do in resolve threads. So, for each S dash, S double dash that threatens a link. So, this is some step which threatens the link, this, this thing. So, why does it threaten? Because this action is producing not of C. If this produces not of C, then that is going to threaten this transition from S i to S j, right. So, in that case we either promote which means that we will decide to do S double dash before S i or we will demote and decide to do S double dash after S j, right. So, we will choose one of these and then we will check whether the plan is consistent, right, in the sense that whether we are introducing cycles or not. If we are not introducing cycles, then fine, we just go ahead and right, okay. Now, well, I have already uh, mentioned some things about binding constants. So, this is there in the original slide, okay, just ignore it. Now, here is a question that suppose that an operator has the effect not at x, should it be considered a threat to the condition at home, right. Now, in this particular example that we had, everything was bound, everything was bound. So, when we used go of x here, because we needed at of b s, we just bound x to b s. So, just by lo looking at what we want to achieve, we can substitute the variable and put the appropriate thing. But we cannot do it always and why cannot we do it always? Because recall that the goal can have a variable. So, if the goal had have of y and then you have you have to put something in order to have of y, you have to buy y, but at that point of time you still do not know whether y what value it will bind to, right. So, suppose uh, we have a scenario where the operator has the effect of not of at x and x is not yet bound. So, this is possible and we have a condition at home. So, should we consider this as a threat? This will become a threat if later on x gets bound to home. If x does not get bound to home, if x gets bound to t stall, we do not have a problem, right. So, this is a possible threat. What do we do with these possible threats? So, there are three ways of dealing with the possible threat. One is that we resolve it now with an equality constraint. We say that bind x to something. So, if you bind x to something other than home, then we are safe, right. That is one way of doing it. But bind x to what? We do not know. So, that is that is not always a very good idea you have to do a lot of backtracking. 
The other thing that we could do is resolve now with an inequality constraint. So, we say that add a constraint that x cannot get bind, bound to home, right. And the third is resolve later. So, do not do anything right now, go ahead with the planning and then if at some point of time x gets bound to home, we will try to put in additional constraints to promote or demote this action, so that the threat is resolved, right. And this third one is the one which is usually the most popular thing. Right? So, if we do that, then the, the, the choose operator and the resolve threats will slightly change. And let us see how it will change. First of all, when we choose operator, because we have bindings now, so we have to see what we want and find an operator which can bind with that. Now, this is all written in formal languages. What effectively it means is that if you have coming back to our example, if you had at x here and this is this can uh, and you require at b s and this produces at of x, then basically we say that we apply this action provided that we can bind x to b s, which in this case we can, right. So, this and this at x and this at b s will unify remember unification in first order logic will unify provided we substitute x with b s right. So, that is simply what it means in some cases these predicates can be more complicated that is why we formally say that the effect of the action and the precondition that you require should unify by a mutual substitution of the variables right. So, that is what we have here that you choose the operators such that it unifies with what you want, right. If it does, then we add those unifications into bindings. So, bindings is another set that we had in the plan structure, which I had uh, not described before. So, these bindings will just keep the these bindings, like x is getting replaced by b s and so on, right. Remaining part of the uh, of this choose operator is similar. And in the resolve threats, what we need to check here is that once you add another link or another step in your plan, you have to check whether the bindings that you have in the plan unifies the effects of the two plans. So, if you if it unifies this C with this not of C dash. Now, are you with me? No, you are not with me, ok. See what I mean to say is that we had this at of x, right and we have this not of at of home. The problem is if x gets bound to home because then this will produce at of home and that one which produces not of at of home will then threaten this, right. We had this action a 1 which produces which require this requires say at home right. And we have this a 3 which produces not of at x. Our problem is that if this x gets bound to home then this action will threaten this transition right. So, what we are doing here is we are checking whether this binds with the not of this. So, this is our C right and this is the not of this is our C dash. So, if these two bind which means see what is not of C dash it is at x. So, does at x bind with at home and yes it does right then we have a problem. So, that is what we are checking here in this. Uh, that whether this C binds with the not of this C, where this unifies with this, right. So, the substitution that we have in the bindings of the plan that unifies this C and this not of C dash. If that happens, then that is a threat, that is a valid threat. So, we either promote it or demote it, right. 
Now, is it somewhat clear now? Hmm? Somewhat. Right. I think what we need to do is we must take one day. Uh, okay. So with this, we come to the end of this lecture. Last lecture we had seen the algorithm partial order planning, the POP algorithm. So today we will study two other algorithms, namely graph plan and SAT plan, which uh, <coughs> have evolved much much more recently. So they have evolved in the 90s, and uh, they were actually brought about because planning was being used in a wide variety of practical domains. For example. Uh, one of the major breakthroughs in planning was when a complete satellite launch by NASA was uh, done with the help of a planner. So why do we need the planner? Because during the actual launching things can go wrong. Things will never go exactly as you want. And so immediately they, you, you need an alternative plan. You need to know what is the alternative sequence of actions that has to be taken so that your uh, launch vehicle comes back into the correct path. So that is why uh, and also in a wide variety of other kinds of control applications, planning was being used. And people found that for problem domains which were NP complete or harder, it was being very difficult to use the partial order planning algorithm. So that is why a uh, new class of algorithms were born. And this class of algorithms made use of the fact that the more recent computers that we had, had more amount of space and had more computation power. So we could have algorithms which were infeasible 20 years back, but, but are perfectly feasible today. So I will talk about two such algorithms in this lecture. <coughs> to start with, we will look at the graph plan algorithm. 